Welcome down to stage five, folks. This is later. Wow, thank you. Uh, my name is Greg Kinnear, your lame duck host. Uh, welcome down to the show. You seem like you're in a fairly good mood tonight, or you showed up to the wrong show. I don't know which it is, but one or the other. Uh, we're not going to waste any time getting right to the show here this evening, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a musical guest. In fact, is it, I think he's going to play a little bit later on, isn't he? I'm excited about that. My guest is a Grammy, Grammy, gr 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 Grammy Award winner and the bass player for the Red Hot Chili Peppers. He's also the first man to make a fashion statement out of the tube sock. Please welcome, if you will, <laughs> Flea. <laughs> Been doing the show for two and a half years, and finally somebody drops dead on their That's first kind of approach. That's kind of slippery there, Greg. Oh, you have my to, uh, gosh. watch out. Hey, you're wearing socks. I they told me you didn't even have any footwear on back there. Well, I've, I've had a little boo-boo the other day, so uh, by, by, the, by the way, excuse me if I smell a little randy. I haven't bathed in a couple of weeks. And what does randy uh, mean exactly? A little foul, a little extra juicy. <laughs> How been since you bathed? It's been a good 10 days. 10 days? Yeah. Now, you're not joking, little, right? No, I have this little booboo on my foot no, no, here. Don't, don't get the feet away from me, uh, please. See this? What here? happened to you? What happened I, I to hurt you? myself surfing. Yeah. See, the fin of my surfboard got me there, and uh, I'm a beginning surfer. Now, are there uh, stitches in there, or is that just that? that no, there are stitches in there. Yeah, yeah. And, and you see, uh, I was surfing on a, about a three-inch wave. And I decided I would fall and uh, <laughs> cut myself open. Was it similar to what we just saw here moments ago? It was kind of like that. I'm kind of accident prone. Uh, how and long I was trying to impress my girlfriend at the time. How long have you been surfing? About four months. Uh huh. And what yeah. made you take this up? Uh, well, I built a house in Australia on a surfing beach, and I decided that I should begin surfing because if I didn't, they would think I was awfully lame. It's like building a house on a fishing lake and not fishing. It's kind of like that. It would be like going to the toilet and not relieving yourself. It would be like... <laughs> I'll leave it at that. No shirt, no shoes, no show. That's our usual policy. We're going to yeah, pass on that here say. tonight. Anyway, how hey, you doing? Pull my finger. What? Oh, just oh, get out of here. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, what are the, what's the tattoos on your... Uh, what is that? Oh, it says love here yes. on this hand. Love. Yes. And, and then... On this hand, it says love also. Ah, oh, see? That's kind of nice. Uh, that's kind of... You got us all in a touchy-feely mood here at the top you know, of the show. It's, it's a little twist on the Robert Mitchum, Night of the Hunted, Love and Hate tattoo concept. You know, it, it's strange, after all your performances and stuff, to, uh, to see you actually here uh, uh, clothed, because it's not completely <laughs> unlike yourself or the band right. to occasionally, if you've seen the Rolling Stone magazine, ladies naked. and gentlemen, or if you've seen, perhaps, this album, Abbey yeah. Road, for the boys to show up with a little less... I didn't mean to touch you there, sorry. <laughs> No, with the boys, I thought something slipped down there. Uh, when did the, uh, is, it, is it dangerous at all when you're playing naked out there? Um, I just, I enjoy being naked. I would never wear clothes if I didn't have to. Mm -hmm. I, um, I'm naked all the time at home. I put on, you know, the least possible amount of clothing if someone comes over to see me. And, um, you know, I took off my clothes and felt free, the breeze blowing up me. <laughs> I like that. That's it? That's the song. Yeah. All right. Well, I, you know, I like being naked. It's fun to play naked. It's a good look. When did you start uh, realizing that uh, being naked is, is kind of fun, kind of free, and kind um, of enjoyable? Because so I'm, not, I'm not ruling it out. I, you know, I think you should give it a whirl. Yeah. It might get some good ratings. <laughs> I don't know. I think it looks good. That's my only hope at this point, right? right? No, I don't know. Do you get good ratings? I don't watch uh, TV. Huge, the only thing huge, I watch is the Lakers. Huge. So. We do. Yeah. We beat Letterman. We beat Leno on a nightly basis. Everybody. Oh, really? Yeah, we crush them all. That's good. Are there? Uh, has your? Uh, I know your grandmother's been to some of your performances, right? She has been. Yeah. Dad, has she actually seen you out par parading around naked, dancing around? She the has. Stage? She. I think she's seen me playing Stark naked. Yeah. You were uh, at the MTV Music Awards recently. I was. And how was that experience? I, you don't seem like a big awards kind of guy to me. Um. You know, I'm kind of a ham and. I'm the, I was in New York City, and it seemed like a good idea for a party, and they called us up because the other guy, I think Seal, canceled out at the last minute because he didn't want to go out there with Claudia Schiffer for some reason. Why? I don't know. He thought it would take away from his image as a serious musician. And since uh, we have no image like that to anyway... <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, and you went out there, didn't you? Uh, you kind of had some fun with her, didn't you? Didn't you like uh, strip um, for her? Yeah, I did a little stripping. It was, you know, it was very calm, and she was pretty concerned about what we were going to do. She didn't want any wild, spontaneous acts happening, so actually... She got uh, hooked up with the wrong guy for that, right? Yeah, well, everything was pretty planned, actually. <laughs> I mean, normally, Anthony and I, doing something like that would, would be spontaneous and just do whatever we felt like, but... Where, where did you, uh, and did, did David give you a hard time? David Copperfield? Uh, you know, oh, yeah, we had to beat, beat him to a bloody pulp yeah, before we went out there. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. Yep. Your first uh, record deal, where was it? It was at EMI Records. Yes. Yeah. And were they totally... Actually, it was Enigma Records. Well, but after that, EMI right. was your first major right. contract. Right. What, were they receptive to you guys from the get-go? Mm, no. I mean, they signed us and all, but they really didn't do much to promote us. And our first three records just kind of sat on the shelf and didn't do much at all. And, um, yeah, that's okay. I feel good about that. I feel like... Our career has taken a really long time. We've been together for going on 15 years, and it's taken us a long time to get to a point where we've communicated with a large, you know, a large quantity of people and, and had any sort of commercial breakthrough. And I think that's a good thing. I think you know, a lot of bands today, they have an MTV hit, and they become like, hugely famous and sell a zillion records right off the bat. And then their career crumbles, because right. it'll just drive you crazy. And you have a chance to actually warn, learn your craft over that much time. Learn right? our craft yeah. and also learn and understand how to deal with being in the public eye and how to psychically protect ourselves and just how to deal with the, you know, with the whole nine yards. How does one psychically protect themselves? One, you know, one needs to do that if one's going to be in the public eye and have all that energy on one all the time. One needs to be careful. Uh, for me, it's just a matter of, you know, putting up my, you know, my defenses where they need to be. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, you I mean, just to keep my soul intact and to keep myself my energy happy and good. Right. Uh, and you meditate, don't you? I do. Now, I, I, I've never uh, never done a lot of meditating in my life. Right. Well, what exactly... I recommend it. You do? Yep. Uh, well, what exactly do you do when you meditate? Um, well, the type of... I do a couple of kinds of meditation. The main kind I do is I just have a sound, a mantra, that I repeat in my head, and I sit quietly and do it twice a day. Like the McDonald's uh, two all beef patties special yeah, sauce like lettuce that. cheese, and you just keep going over and over again. I do that backwards. Right, yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't matter what you're saying; it's just the repeating of it is calming. Yeah. Well, I think there are sound currents that are supposed to calm you more than other sounds, right. and um, you're never supposed to tell your sound. Give me your favorite chant. Come on, come on, I tell us. Tell, tell us your you. favorite chant. We want to know. I can't tell you. It's top secret. Well, you've been a lot of help trying to get it out of him. <laughs> Uh, you, uh, Anthony uh, Kiedis, uh, lead singer of the uh, group. Uh, yeah. You guys have known each other from way back, uh, right? 18 or 19 years. I, I, yeah. I used to live in a house uh, right over near uh, Fairfax High School where you guys oh, yeah. went to high school, right? Yeah. I mean, was it, uh, now you, re you watch the news and they're like carrying guns around and stuff. Was it as dangerous when you were there? No, it wasn't. I mean, there were elements of danger and there were things, but, you know, back then the worst thing was like, a stabbing or right. someone getting beat up or you know you would get herpes and now it's like you know you get shot and you get AIDS and you yeah. know the whole environment in Los Angeles in the world is a lot more hostile than it was 10 years ago when we were in high school. And, and how about you uh, and, and Anthony? Pretty good kids? Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> were you, uh, were you uh, uh, showing up to class diligently each and every day and um, focusing it, on the work at hand? It fluctuated. <laughs> it fluctuated. There were times when um, I was very diligent and very good with my schoolwork and a straight-A student, and there were times when I was dropping acid and not showing up and, uh -huh. you know, interested in other things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when, did we come up, when did you get the nickname Flea? Um, I was going on a skiing trip with two friends of mine, and one of them said, you be tree and you be flea and I'll be squeak. And uh, he just said that. And then for the, rest of, for the rest of the trip, I was flea and the other guy was tree and the other guy was squeak. And the guy that he named tree is still tree to this day. And, uh, but the other guy is, is squeakless. Sad day for that when that took place, right? right. This is a friend of mine uh, actually uh, went to high we school the same time you were, you were right. going there. Right. Is that junior uh, high or high school? Yeah, uh, this is when you were like in uh, ninth grade. Ladies and gentlemen, take a look at a yes. very young, small, little flea. There he is. You had some hair, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, right next to him is, uh, is Tree and Squeaky over here. <laughs> no, you can find no, Tree. No. You can't? No, tree we're not going to start doing that oh, right oh. now. Uh, and you're actually in high school uh, to have the prettiest eyes. Did you know really? that? Really? Yeah, no. They, they Did they really the, say that? Yeah, the prettiest eyes. Pounded you for that one, huh? <laughs> uh, you are probably our most tattooed guest. Are they top to bottom all over the place? Um, I have quite a few. I have um, 
This one that my friend Bill Stobau designed. Horribly yeah. painful to go through the um, doing this. Yeah. Does hurt. I got a must-see TV tattoo on my butt. Oh, do you? Um, but that's about it. I have a tattoo of Mighty Mouse flying out of my ass. It says, here I come to save the day. <laughs> and speaking of that, you know... I didn't microphone. see that on my report anywhere. <laughs> you know this little microphone He's actually there? flying out of your ass. I'm joking. Just, I don't really have that. Just so I'm clear. Uh, I'll tell you what, we got to do a break. It's great having oh, you on yeah. the show. We're going to uh, be back with Flea right after this. Unlike those big juice companies, we have a different idea about window offices, cutting overhead, even liquid assets. Florida's natural premium brand, Not From Concentrate Juice, is made by a co-op of growers whose only business is making juices. They own the land, the trees, the company. So although our idea of market forecast may be a little different, it's a difference you can taste. Florida's natural premium brand juice. She's an amnesia victim. This man is going to help me find some things out. Whose past is coming back. You're an assassin working for the United States government. I'm in the GTA. Then quit. One bullet at a time. We have 24 hours. We find her and we kill her. Who are you? My name's Charlie, the spy. Gina Davis, Samuel L. Jackson. Nobody move! <laughs> the Long Kiss Goodnight, rated R, starts Friday at a theater near you. Why won't they let Ross debate? Is it because after the 92 election, 40% said that if they'd voted their conscience, they'd have voted for Ross and he would have won? In 1996, vote your conscience. Vote for Perot. That foot odor. Can anything stop it? Odor Eaters Insoles with genuine Arm & Hammer baking soda to neutralize odor causing sweaty foot acid. No more foot odor. Only Odor Eaters stops foot odor with genuine Arm & Hammer baking soda. At It's Academic, they thrive on competition. It is a wonderful feat. Keeps you moving, keeps that drive going, keeps positive thinking. It's working for our kids. We put the emphasis on the scholarship and the hard work of these young high school people. There are at least 10,000 students who have been on the program. It's Academic. 36 years of working for our kids on NBC4. latest album, my friends? Yeah, Who's it is. Oh, why are you smiling? What? What? What are you kind of smiling? Oh, just that silly video. Oh, you don't like that video? Mm, it's okay. It's kind of silly. Well, control your enthusiasm here, Flea. I you mean... Know, I, I tell you the truth, I think it's a little overly melodramatic and just not our most shining hour. Right. Yeah. And what, do you, don't you have any say in the, when you guys put these things together? Yeah, but it's really a crapshoot, you know, making a rock video, and it's, you know, it's... Sort of like a movie. You just do it, and then it turns out, or it doesn't turn out. You yeah, know. well, there's just a lot of things that are left up to chance, you right. know, when you have two days to shoot it or a day to shoot it, and, you know. Uh, the, what's the song about? The song, my friends, is a song, well, Anthony wrote the words for that. I didn't, and um, so you'd be best off asking him, but my perception... Anthony, come on out here! <laughs> my perception of it is basically it's just about um, being in a position where you look all around you and you see the people that you love and they're all having a really hard time with their lives. Right. Well, you guys have had, like, you've had friends uh, uh, die of drug overdoses recently. You've been through, uh, River Phoenix was a good friend of yours. Yeah, he was. Uh, was that a difficult time for you when that went down? Um, yeah, it was really difficult. It's still difficult. Yeah. I mean, you know, I loved him deeply. I still love him deeply. But is, I'd rather really not talk about him now. Yeah. What about the uh, about heroin itself? I mean, it, it, it's a. 
what is it about the drug that seems to be so seductive and seems to be so prevalent right now in the entertainment business? Well, it, well, it seems like, you know, every few years the media decides to make a fuss about it and say, well, heroin's up right now and it's really trendy and it's all pervasive in the music industry or the film industry and you have, you know, so this actor or that musician that's getting high on dope. Um, you think it's always been going on? Always and been it's popular in American culture in the 40s and 50s, you know, and the jazz musicians were doing it and stuff, and it started off being mostly like intellectuals and poets and beat types and stuff, and it, it uh, bled into society at large. You know, I think that, I mean, without a doubt, our government likes to keep lots of drugs in the ghettos to keep people in the ghettos down so rich white males can stay in power. But um, beyond that, it's, you know, it's a very addictive drug, and there are some people who are you know, unfortunate enough to have to battle with drug addiction. It's a very difficult thing, and I've seen it a lot of times, and I just have compassion and love for everyone that has to deal with that, because right. that's what they need, and that's what they deserve. All right. Um, <laughs> what about you guys? Are you still, uh, you just got back from a tour? Yeah, we finished touring our last record about a month and a half or two months ago or something like that. And Is it exhausting when you come back from this? It's, well, on, this, on the last tour, we did it at a lot more reasonable pace. We just do like a few weeks on, take a week or so off, a few weeks on, take a week or so off. And it, it was a lot easier. Um, touring in the past just about killed me. On the, the Blood Sugar tour, we toured for a couple of years, and it was just... You had like a breakdown or something. I did, yeah. What did they call that? What, what was it's, it? You know, I don't know. I just was run out. I ran out of fuel. Right. I ran out of gas. What does it crashed. mean? But how does it manifest itself when it you run out of for, gas? For me, it manifested itself in just, I was just really ill and run down. My immune system was down. I was really tired all the time. I was depressed. I was just unhappy. You know, I just... Isn't that you know, amazing, though? The irony, though, is that this was at a time when you guys were... Oh, man, right. there you were cranking. Oh, yeah. Well, the thing I worked for my whole life to, like, achieve this, you know, so-called rock star. I mean, you know, I had money, I had respect from artists and from people, and I had, you know, all this good stuff going on, and I was miserable, you know? And in one way, it was terrible. In another way, it was really good to realize, you know, what were the important things in life, which I always realized... But it was, you know, I definitely learned, you know, what were the essential ingredients to being happy, which, you know, basically love and, and your friends and your family and, and uh, you know, being proud of yourself and being true to your truest self. You guys are heading off to uh, Hawaii yeah, now to, to work Hawaii on your next, next album? To write record. Why Hawaii, and by the way? Just to get out of the city and Good to hole up to and to do mind. it. And we're going to Kauai and I'm always, you know, that's supposed to be a, uh, a vortex of... Uh, Good energy. I'm going to encourage you to stay off your surfboard while you're down there, uh, all right? No, I'm going to be surfing daily. <laughs> we'll we'll yeah. be back right after this. Yeah. You're going to play something for us? I will, yeah. All right. Please, yeah. we'll be back right after these words. Some women think scents and fragrance can help them keep a clean feeling longer, even with their panty liners. But scents and fragrance just mask odor. New All Days from Always help control it without fragrance. All Days panty liners mean a clean feeling longer because their odor-absorbing core and dry weave top sheet pull moisture and odor inside away from you. So don't just mask odor, control it. New All Days odor-absorbing panty liners give you nothing but a clean feeling longer. Only the Sears Auto Center is filled to capacity with these top brand tires. And through October 14th, they're all on sale. All sizes for all vehicles at guaranteed unbeatable prices. Only at our garage, the Sears Auto Center. It's sort of like combining the style of Holyfield with the power of Foreman. No matter how you describe it, it's about to change the way we see and hear forever. Sunday. Right there. Stop. Oh my God. She's got evidence that aliens do exist. This is the biggest news story ever. She can prove it. Can you hide this? If they let her live. I want the package now. Murphy Brown's Faith Ford in a world premiere thriller. Night Visitors, NBC Sunday. No one expects to be injured by a doctor. But if your child or other family member suffers a birth trauma, cerebral palsy known as CP, or misdiagnosed cancer due to medical error, protect your family. Call Science and Kirk at 1-800-LAWYERS. Our clients collect millions of dollars every year in compensation as provided by law. If you have a phone, you have a lawyer. Call 1-800-LAWYERS now. Science and Kirk. 
You saw the story on News 4. As a mother struggles to save her child's life, the family car used to take 11-year-old cancer patient Rachel Holling to her appointments is stolen. One more thing to bring you down. After seeing the story on News 4, a local car dealership presents the Holling family with a car. Here's a car for you. You can use it as long as you need it. Helping each other. That's what working for you really means. There are people out there who really do care. And thank you. So, uh, is this from your latest album, or is this just anything in particular? No, this is just a little song that I wrote. I actually wrote it. I was down in Australia at my house down at this place called Congo, and um, it's just a melancholy little number. And there's not even a name for it, I'm told. Yeah, it doesn't have a name. So we'll name it after you play it. Okay. Very good. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Flea with a little something for you. simple beginning. It goes like this. I'm standing on, standing on the brink of all this empty space that's filled with what? Don't know what to do. in New York, owned by the biggest sports stars around. You know, I like to have long hair. And you never know sure. when they'll show up. Long. Sure. It's the official All-Star Cafe. Ken Griffey Jr., 301 lifetime average. Where the owners are always willing to help out. Excuse me, it's 302. 
So if you go, bring the right stats and the right card. Visa, because the All-Star doesn't take American Express. 301 lifetime average. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Imagine a dishwasher with a self-cleaning filter that makes hand-rinsing your dishes obsolete. Imagine, too, if that same dishwasher held more knives and forks and adjusted to handle whatever you needed to clean. And if it could do all of this quietly, it would be this dishwasher, Kenmore, proven to clean better than any other. Shouldn't you consider the brand that's already at work in over one out of two homes in America? Kenmore. Come see the innovative side of Sears. Goodyear retailers are celebrating low, low prices. Now save up to 25% off the regular price on some of Goodyear's most popular tires. So call your nearest retailer at 1-800-GOODYEAR and join the saving celebration. Why won't they let Ross in the debates? Is it because of his pledge to reform campaign spending and to end influence peddling in Washington by lobbyists? In 1996, vote your conscience. Vote for Perot. The revolution begins here. From now on, the promise of the internet and the power of television become one. Because from now on, NBC News and Microsoft will revolutionize the way you get news. MSNBC. A 24-hour cable and internet news service. The future of news from the people you know. Call your cable operator for MSNBC. I'm a little bee. I love the sky and the trees. We got them all. We got them all. I that picture. Yeah, that's right. We're back. That's uh, that's going to uh, do it for us. That was the only the second time you ever played for uh, an audience like that, right? I mean, yeah, in I terms of you singing you know. and guitar. Yeah, that's a new thing for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks yeah. for doing that. That was nice. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Flea here. Pleasure to meet you. Thanks again. We're gonna say good night from uh, number five. So long, everybody. Later on Nightside, Jack Kemp versus Al Gore. Anyone land a knockout punch in the vice presidential debate? And how did it compare to Dole versus Clinton? Details later on NBC Nightside.